All right, New Testament class. This video is going to be about the book of Galatians. So, first let's start with some historical context. The author is Paul. This is one of the Pauline epistles, and it's an early epistle. So who was Paul? Let's remember, he was a Jewish persecutor of the church before encountering Jesus in a vision. And after he encountered Jesus, he became an apostle, went on numerous missionary journeys that you guys did your presentations on. And he wrote many of the letters that are in the New Testament, like we saw in class on Monday. He wrote um, more than half of the letters that we have in the New Testament. Who was the audience? Uh, the audience were Christians in the region of Galatia. And so you can see Galatia's um, not one particular town, but it's kind of that region up there. Um, and Paul knew them from his first missionary journey when he traveled through that area. What was his reason for writing? Uh, Paul is correcting a false teaching that was going around in the church. And it's mentioned by name, there are these teachers called Judaizers. And they were trying to convince Gentiles that they needed to be Jewish before they could follow Jesus. Uh, and now hopefully that sounds familiar because that's a problem that was addressed by a number of different people during this time. But this letter to the Galatians is specifically calling out that teaching. Um, now, Paul himself was uniquely positioned to correct this teaching uh, because he had been trained in the Jewish law and religion. Uh, like we said, before he became a Christian, he was not only really a persecutor of the church, but he was a Pharisee which if we remember, um, they, those were the ones uh, who were really, really, really well-versed and just scholared in the Jewish law. They took it really seriously. And so he knows his stuff when he's writing to this Galatian church. Uh, and he tells the Galatians they cannot be saved by following the Jewish law, only by faith in Christ. So why was this a problem in the church? Uh, just to review, this relationship between Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians was a huge issue uh, in those, um, you know, immediate decades after Jesus ascended, as the church was trying to figure out what to do. And we saw in the book of Acts, as the Holy Spirit starts to descend, not only on the Jews, but also on the Gentiles, it just really um, was confusing for the early church as to how they were supposed to deal with it. Uh, basically, all of the first followers of Jesus were Jewish, and Jesus was understood as the Jewish Messiah, supposed to fulfill all the promises and prophecies of the Old Testament, and the Jewish people understood themselves to be God's chosen people. So again, just like for Gentiles to enter in, it made sense, okay, if Gentiles become Jewish, well, then they can follow Jesus because we're all Jewish, they should become like us, but this idea that they could somehow bypass becoming Jewish and just follow Jesus didn't make much sense. But the thing is that Jesus had actually predicted that this would happen. And if we go back to John's gospel, um, Jesus says this, he says, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. And so Jesus there is using this sheep imagery, right? Sheep imagery happens all throughout the Bible where people are described as sheep and God is described as the shepherd. And so Jesus is saying, yes, I, I have my sheep, the Jewish people, but I have other sheep too, the Gentiles, and they are all going to come in and be one flock and I will be one shepherd over them. So even though Jesus had taught that this would happen, uh, it was still really challenging when it did. And we can remember in Acts 15, the church leaders met to decide how to handle the situation. And they decided that Gentiles should be allowed in the church as long as they followed certain rules. So we don't know if Galatians was written before the council met or if it was written shortly after the council made their decision. Um, but in any case, Paul's letter agrees with what they decided in Acts 15. Gentiles can follow Jesus without becoming Jewish. So we're just going to look at a couple of key passages. Um, there's a number of passages where Paul reveals his frustration at the church for listening to this false teaching. One example is in Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9. It says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ 
and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we've already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a, go a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. So anytime we read a passage of the Bible and something is repeated, that's their way of like underlining, highlighting, bolding, exclamation points, right? And Paul takes this so seriously. He's saying, if you are telling people they have to become Jewish to follow Jesus, you should be under a curse from God. Like they, Paul cannot get more emphatic than that. He takes this issue really, really, really seriously. Uh, another place he says in Galatians 5, 11 and 12, brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Um, Paul's a little sassy there, right? But he's also just, again, showing how seriously he takes this issue. Uh, he has no time, no patience for these people who are throwing others into confusion. He, Paul says it is through faith in Christ alone. So Paul doesn't just, um, you know, make a lot of bold statements about his opinions, but he also backs up what he's saying with uh, Old Testament references. So for example, in Galatians 3, 26 through 29, he says that everyone who believes in Jesus is equal and they are all heirs of Abraham. It says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And now this would have been, you know, a radical statement because the Jewish people really claimed Abraham as their forefather, as their ancestor, as their patriarch, right? And so to suggest now, because of Jesus, anybody who believes in Jesus can claim um, Abraham was a really, really radical thought. Galatians is, um, yes, mostly about the Judaizers, but we also have this other kind of famous text. This is the idea of the fruit of the Spirit which is a list of characteristics that the Holy Spirit gives to people who believe in Jesus, whether they are Jew or Gentile. We see here, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So, what's the overall message? Paul wrote to the Galatian Christians to encourage them. They do not need to follow the Jewish law to be made righteous in front of God, in fact, the law cannot do that even if they tried. The important thing is faith in Christ and the Spirit working that out in their lives.